So this isn't just an opportunity to learn or to hear what someone else wants to tell you. This is an opportunity for people who don't believe in this to prove them wrong. That's the beautiful thing about science is that it is evidence based. And in this case, it is something you can put your own hands on. So please feel free to challenge anything that you see here. I am openly inviting it. I can't do anything but learn here. So this is a little piece of calcium carbonate that comes out of a spotted sea trout or a speckled trout. And this is specifically what we're talking about today. We're gonna to go to the DMF. They're gonna show you how to extract an otolith and how they go about determining the age of a speckled trout from this little ear bone. We're gonna be three different areas. Three different locations. This is the wet lab. This is where we take fish and we take out the ear bones, take scale samples, fin clip samples, take data. We will also be in my office, which is the processing room, where we have the saw, and we'll be processing otoliths for you. And then we're going to be in the microscope room or the dark room where we're going to be aging fish. So what do we do with scale samples? You can age them just like otoliths. They have rings, and I can show those to you too. So we have multiple ways of proving mm -hmm. the age of the fish. All right, so next we'll go ahead and we'll take out the otoliths. So otoliths on the bony fish are going to sit underneath the brain and behind the eyes. So what we have is a little notch right here that's called the pre and that basically points to where we're gonna be cutting and looking for those otoliths at, across and through the eye. That is our brain right there. But you can already see the otolith sitting there on either side once I cleaned everything out of the way. So that is what we're looking for. There's one. And there's two. All right, so this is your first opportunity to challenge this. I challenge them as well. Where do these fish come from? Where are you getting your samples from? They go to fish houses, they go to fishing tournaments, and they also have carcass collection donation sites. So if you feel like there's something big that the division is missing, you can send them in your trout as well. For instance, if you think that the population is in truly incredible shape, you could send them, if you're killing a whole lot of giant trout, uh, you could send those in and they would see, you know, more older fish in a certain area, or you may have a problem in your area and you're sending in fish that are older than they should be for the size that they're at. First, we're gonna saw and grind down to a flat surface. I just mark them. I'm finding the approximate point of where that focus is gonna be, the point where that's had all its life. You might not be able to see, but there's a V right there, a V that goes that way. I'm looking for that V to be pretty even. Once I have these little tips that I've ground, we are going to mount them just like that with some UV glue. So they're gonna hang out in there for a little bit. We can come back and see if they're dry enough. There. After the otoliths are dried, the other side is ground down to make one very thin piece. This okay. is the speckled trout, the, the really big speckled trout. 11 pound, 11 ounce. This right here is the focus, the spot that it's had all its life. We're going to count the dark rings. So one, two, three, four, five, six. You can kind of see the line starting to come up here. The annuli is starting to show up here and kind of in this corner here. Um, so we'd bump it from six to seven to put it into its cohort, not necessarily into its actual current age. So we'll do that between the first of the year and the date of annuli formation, mm -hmm. which is usually in the spring, late spring, ending usually in June or July. So this slice is a uh, half a millimeter. Oh, okay. So that is the slice Here you're we looking go. at. Well, there you have it, folks. That absolutely legendary fish, not a fish of a lifetime, a fish of 10,000 lifetimes. Um, I do this so much and I guarantee I'll never see an 11 pound trout in my <laughs> life. I'm fairly certain of it, but while we're on that subject, so what, what is the typical age of a, a speckled trout? We talked about this earlier. What's the typical age of the vast majority of a speckled trout that we see? Two. Two, two is our cohort that Two years we see old, right? Of. So that's, that's even from the fish house. That's, that's everywhere, right? Which, I mean, that's normal, right? So as you have depletion mm -hmm. uh, in a stock, um, but what is the lifespan of a speckled trout? I'm pretty sure they do get up to nine, right? I nine, think we can see nine. nine. Years is... We really don't see that a lot, though. Have you ever seen like, nine before? I have not. I don't. I don't think so. You I think, think six, seven is about the biggest we get. Six, seven. 
Took me a little bit of time to find the focus there, but I was after a few tries uh, able to replicate what they are doing at the DMF. And I did that with, uh, I used some tile pliers for, for breaking tile specifically uh, to get down close to that focus area. And then I used a Dremel and sandpaper. It's a little bit hard to see that thing because it's so tiny. Let me pull that backing paper off of it. You can see there. So this is a 20.8 inch male. I can, I'll take a screenshot of this here and I'll show it to you over on my PC. All right, so just like rings on a tree, in the wintertime, they don't grow as quickly, so they get these dense lines, and you can see this fish was three years old, meaning it would be four sometime around April, May, whenever it was spawned out from. So this fish is three years old when it was taken. Got a couple more. So this is a 20-inch female. This is one where I did not do a very good job with the focus, uh, but you can still see here. Uh, I'm not sure the division staff would 100% agree with me on this one, um, this was my first one. All right, so this is the 20 inch female. And even though it's harder to see here, you can see two obvious rings. So this fish would be two years old. And we have a 24 inch female. All right, we got a pretty big trout here. And this one is uh, is relatively clear. So we can see our 24 inch female here. And this fish is three years old. Now, all of these fish were taken in January. So with the way that the Department of Marine Fisheries ages these fish, each one of them would be classified as having been one year older um, because that's how they do things in cohorts. So if this fish was caught, you know, at the very end of December, then it's considered a three-year-old fish. If it's January 1st, it's considered a four-year-old fish. All right, so the Department of Marine Fisheries puts together an age-length chart with all of the fish that they process. They process about 15,000 otoliths a year, and through this processing, they can create an age-length chart so in a way, you really do not have to look at the otolith yourself to have a pretty doggone good idea of how old a fish is. Now, if you look at these bars, there are definitely some fish that stand out wildly, like, holy crap, was there a one-year-old 28-inch fish? And there might have been in some freak world, perhaps it was an error in aging. Um, I really wish it showed the numbers of fish near that center point. It would be the vast, vast, vast majority near that center point. Basically using this, whatever that average is for that trout's age, and you can see with the 24-inch female, and I remember how division ages them, they would say the 24-inch female was four years old. If we look at her on here, we'll see pretty much exactly the same thing. So again, Unless you just think that the, the division is lying about this kind of stuff, um, and in which case, you can feel free to send me some otoliths, and I will age them for you. Uh, if you don't even trust me, you send me those fish, and I will literally go through the entire process on camera, won't cut or anything, uh, grind the whole thing down, take it out of the fish, grind the whole thing down, and show you right from the measurement, right on up to the microscope. I'm absolutely willing to do that for people so that somebody knows you know, what's really going on out there um, but for those of you who see how obvious this really is, the age length charts are good. And the thing I want to point out here is that the state record was a seven year old fish. And remember, remember, a six year old fish is truly what that 11 pound, 11 ounce was. It was truly six years old, but they put it into cohorts because that's the way the division looks at it. They try to look at year classes and the health in each year class. And this, this can tell them the mortality rate over time, right? There are a ton of fish in North Carolina right now. There's absolutely no question about that. But obviously, all of that resource is being used up over time. Now, you could bring cold kill into that, but we have not had a cold kill in seven years. And the vast majority of the fish that are coming in are one and two year old fish. This is the vast majority of them. Obviously, you'll see some threes and some fours. But seeing fish that are seven years old is extremely rare. There hasn't been a cold kill in seven years. So you explained it to me what is going on. How healthy truly is the speckled trout population in North Carolina if we don't have any fish reaching that? And I'm not saying that's a bad thing. We're utilizing the resource. Uh, we don't want fish to be dying of old age. That means they're not coming out of that system. But again, for everybody who thinks everything's fine, I would ask that you consider that carefully uh, about what it means for the speckled trout population. Again, feel free to challenge me, reach out, and I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.